Warning, there are people pretending to be me in the comments. This is what a comment from me looks like. Notice that the name is spelled perfectly and notice the border around the name. That's how you know it's from me. You can also click on my name to make sure you actually go to my channel to double check. And this is what a comment from an imposter will look like. It has weird characters in the name or comment and it's usually going to ask you to add them on WhatsApp or Telegram. I don't have WhatsApp or Telegram and I would never ask you to add me on there. All right, so please be careful, use your common sense, and now let's get back to the video. Hey, how's it going GPU heads? Thanks for clicking on my video. Seb Heslo here, and today we're gonna be doing a full deep dive on this RTX 3090 in terms of mining. We're gonna be testing it to find what is the absolute highest hash rate we can find, what is the best efficiency we can find, you know, what is the profitability, how much power does it consume, as well as having a look at overclock settings, but a little bit more on that in just a bit. And we're gonna be testing all of this on Ethereum, Ethereum Classic, Ravencoin, Firo, Ergo, as well as Flux. And now this GPU is actually not LHR because from what I've seen, no 3090 is ever LHR, which means it does not have any sort of hash rate limiters in place, which is cool. And this is another video in a series I'm doing where I'm doing a complete deep dive on all of Nvidia's current RTX 30 series GPUs in terms of mining, as well as the GTX 16 series as well. And after watching this video, if you do feel like the 3090 is the GPU for you, I will be leaving affiliate links in the description below this video. Now, as I said, those are affiliate links, which full disclosure means that if you do make a purchase through those links, the channel does get a small commission at no extra cost to you, basically. And so just quickly before we get started, I wanna mention that like I will be showing you my overclock settings, you know, for the different coins we're gonna be mining here. But just keep in mind that those settings are for my GPU. So they most likely will not be optimal for your GPU because each GPU is individual and needs its own unique overclock settings. But don't worry because I actually have a full video guide on how to find the perfect overclock settings for your specific GPU, no matter what coin you're mining. So I'll be leaving that up in the card above there, as well as a link in the description below. But yeah, with that out of the way, let's hop on over to the computer and, you know, review this 3090 in terms of mining. Okay guys, so before we get started, I just wanted to show you here the GPU-Z statistics for the GPU because some of you were interested in seeing that. So you can see we got the RTX 3090 with GDDR6X Micron memory. And yeah, there's all the stats on the screen if that's something you're interested in. Now let's have a look at our initial Ethereum hash rate. So right now I have it at completely stock settings, except for the fan speed, I put that at 100% just to be safe. And as you can see, with all stock settings, we are getting 107 mega hash uh, at about 388 watts for an efficiency of 276 kilo hashes per watt. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start power limiting the GPU with stock clocks and see what the best efficiency we can get is that way. So the best efficiency that I was able to find with stock clocks was at 75% power limit where we are getting 105.7 mega hash at 292 watts for an efficiency of 362 kilo hashes per watt. But now I'm gonna put power limit back to 100% and let's start overclocking this GPU to see what the highest possible hash rate we can get is. All right, so overclocks are in place and I wanna say thank you to Tech Shinji, who is a fellow crypto and tech YouTuber. I'll leave a link for his channel in the description. Uh, he gave me some good pointers about overclocking the 3090, which really helped. Uh, but basically he said a good safe number for mem overclock is like 1500 or so. Now I was able to push mine to 1600, but that is probably a little bit higher because this is a higher end card. It's an Asus Strix. Anyway, that gave me a hash rate of 127 mega hash, which is, I mean, it's just an insane hash rate, like regardless of power, right? Uh, but speaking of power, that is at 389 watts, so definitely pulling a lot of power for a hash rate like that. Uh, but it's giving us an efficiency of 327 kilo hashes per watt, which is decent. But now let's try to power limit with the overclocks in place and see what the best efficiency we can get while overclock this. 
All right, now the best efficiency that I was able to find while overclocked was at 83% power limit, where we are getting 122.4 mega hash roughly at a power consumption of 323 watts. And that gives us an efficiency of 379 kilo hashes per watt, uh, which is definitely decent for such a powerful card. Uh, but now there's one more thing I want to try, which is to use a locked core clock instead of power limit. And let's see if we can get a better result that way. All right, so with a core clock locked at 1300 megahertz, we basically got the best result in terms of everything. So we got a higher hash rate at 127.6 mega hash, which is the highest we've seen. And we're also getting the best efficiency uh, by pulling just 335 watts at that hash rate, which gives us an efficiency of 381 uh, kilo hash per watt. But yeah, that is it for Ethereum and Ethereum Classic. I don't know if I mentioned in the beginning, but the results will be the same for Ethereum and Ethereum Classic in terms of hash rate, overclock settings, efficiencies, all that, because they use such similar algorithms. But let's move on to Ravencoin slash Firo. Okay, so when it comes to Ravencoin and Firo, what's good for us is that they use very similar algorithms. Ravencoin with their CorePow algorithm and Firo with their FiroPow algorithm, which are both just like slight variations of the ProgPow algorithm. And what that means is that stuff like overclock settings, hash rates, efficiencies will all be the same for both Ravencoin and Firo which means we just have to test one of them, which I'll do Ravencoin today, and we will know that the results will be the exact same for Firo as well. So we don't have to sit through me testing both of them, basically. But with that out of the way, let's have a look at the hash rate we would get on Ravencoin and Firo with all completely stock settings. All right, so it seems that at all stock settings, we're getting about 54 mega hash at 389 watts for an efficiency of 139 kilo hashes per watt. Now I'm gonna start power limiting at stock clocks and let's see what the best efficiency we can get that way is. All right, the best efficiency I was able to find with stock clocks was at 88% power limit, where we're getting 53 mega hash per second at 342 watts, which gives us an efficiency of 155 kilo hashes per watt. But now I'm going to start overclocking and see what the highest possible hash rate we can get is. Okay, so the highest hash rate that I was able to get was 63.1 mega hash, which is crazy much. Um, but that is at a power of 389 watts, which gives us an efficiency of 162 kilo hashes per watt. But I'm going to start power limiting now with the overclocks in place. So let's see what the best efficiency we can get by doing that is. So, believe it or not, the best efficiency I could find was actually at 100% power limit. So, yeah, same, you know, stats as before, 63.11 mega hash, 389 watts for an efficiency of 162 kilo hashes per watt. So that's the best that we can do, but I am gonna try to do locked core clock instead and see if we can get a better result that way. All right, so basically locked core clock was just worse in every way. So I'm not even gonna bother including it on the spreadsheet results that we'll be having a look at once we're done with the testing here in the video. And for now, let's move on to Ergo. Okay, so we're up and mining Ergo and with all these stock settings, we're getting 232 mega hash at 340 watts. And that gives us an efficiency of 682 kilo hash per watt. But now, Let's start power limiting at stock clocks and see what the best efficiency we can get that way is. So the best efficiency that I was able to find at stock clocks was at 60% power limit, where we are getting 240.42 mega hash. So we actually saw a bit of an increase in hash rate by power limiting, which was, you know, unusual. Uh, but that is at 233 watts for an efficiency of 1.03 mega hash per watt. But now let's put power limit back to 100% and start overclocking. Okay, so the highest hash rate that I was able to find with overclocking is 285.4 mega hash at 351 watts, which gives us an efficiency of 813 kilo hash per watt. Now I'm gonna start power limiting at, the, at these overclock settings and let's see if we can get better efficiency that way. 
All right, so the best efficiency that I was able to find was at 65% power limit, where we're getting around 62, 63 mega hash at 253 watts for an efficiency of 1.04 mega hash per watt. But now I still wanna try locking the core clock and see if we can get a better result that way. All right, guys, so I wasn't able to find any sort of better efficiency uh, or higher hash rate doing locked core. However, I did find something else, which was I found a really nice sweet spot in doing this, where I'm getting basically 282 mega hash, which is very close to the absolute max we were able to find at 285. So just three mega hash less, but at a significantly lower power draw of just 290 watts. So by doing locked core clock, you could get the highest possible hash rate almost, but at a much lower wattage. So kind of like a sweet spot. But anyway, with that said, that is it for Ergo. So let's move on over to Flux. So we are up and mining Flux. And with all just stock settings, we're getting around 107 solutions per second at 389 watts for an efficiency of 0.275 solutions per second per watt basically but now let's start power limiting and see what the best efficiency we can get at stock clocks is all right so the best efficiency that i was able to find at stock clocks mining flux was at 75 percent power limit where we're getting 92 92 and a half or so solutions per second at 292 watts which gives us an efficiency of 0.315 solutions per second per watt. But now I'm gonna put power limit back to 100% and start to overclock. Okay, so the highest hash rate I was able to find with overclocking is 112 solutions per second. And that's of course pulling the full 389 watts, uh, which gives us an efficiency of 0.288 solutions per second per watt. But now I'm gonna start power limiting with the overclocks in place to see what the best efficiency we can get is. All right, so overclocks in place. The best efficiency I was able to find was at 78% power limit, where we are getting 97 to 98 solutions per second at 304 watts for a efficiency of 0.319 solutions per second per watt. So now I'm just gonna try locking the core clock and see if we get a better result that way. All right, so basically locking the core clock was just worse in every way, lower hash rate and higher wattage. So I'm not even gonna include it in the spreadsheet. But speaking of the spreadsheet, we are actually done with all of our testing. So let's have a look at all of our results. So here are all of our results and let's just run through uh, what we found quickly here. So basically for Ethereum and Ethereum Classic, you know, not a hard choice. You're getting the highest hash rate at the best efficiency when using locked core clock at 1300 megahertz. Um, basically you're getting 128 almost mega hash with an efficiency of 381 kilo hash per watt, which is, which is decent considering how powerful the GPU is. Now moving on to Ravencoin and Firo, same story there. You're getting the highest hash rate at the most efficient settings basically, giving you 63 mega hash at an efficiency of 162 kilo hash per watt. Moving on to Ergo, the absolute highest hash rate we found was 285 mega hash, but that was at a pretty high power consumption of 352 watts. And what I found there was, if you're willing to sacrifice just a few mega hash, you can get pretty decent efficiency using a locked core clock, getting 282 mega hash at just 290 watts. So, you know, like three mega hash less, but 62 watts less and um, if you really really want to squeeze the most like efficiency out of it you can do that but then you have to go all the way down to 264 mega hash uh, which would pull 253 watts for an efficiency of just over one mega hash per watt 
which is a decent um, efficiency. And then finally we have Flux where highest hash rate was 112 solutions per second and of course that was pulling full like full TDP at 390 watts but for best efficiency you could use power limit down to 78% which would give you 97 solutions per second which is pretty like close to the full uh, but at uh, 85 watts less so much better efficiency there and now what I have done is I've taken all of these numbers and I have plugged them into what to mine and we can have a look at what the profitability mining on a 3090 would be as of today so let's hit calculate and see what our results are so of course on top we got ethereum making you seven dollars and 51 cents per day after electricity and by the way electricity cost that i'm using is 10 cents per kilowatt hour in second place we have flux making you five dollars a day after electricity cost third place ravencoin at four dollars 48 cents a day then we got Firo at just one cent less at four dollars 47 cents per day we then have ergo at three dollars 36 cents per day and then finally we have ethereum classic making you three dollars and 21 cents per day but that's it all right that's it so now if you found this helpful or entertaining i guess then please give the video one of these i'd really appreciate it and what you got to do now is you got to click on the next video on the screen because this video is over you can also click the picture on my face so subscribe to the channel i'd really appreciate that but yeah go click on that next video and i'll see you there goodbye bye bye goodbye bye bye